let's do another one. Yo. I thought I would start this out a few days ago. I was working on this program, a webcam program that takes your webcam video and turns it into something that looks kind of like a, a Game Boy camera. And what the Game Boy camera was, it was this really cool camera attachment for the Game Boy that was made in the year. There's no year on this. 1998. Now what was cool about the Game Boy camera was that it could take pictures albeit very crappy ones. What I like about the Game Boy camera is it has a very unique picture, it has a very unique feel to it, it's a very unique looking image, a very unique aesthetic that uh, I didn't really capture in this program. I obviously captured the UI and the look of the program itself along with the controls that work with the arrow keys on the keyboard, but they don't do anything yet either. What I noticed about the Game Boy Camera though is that you get this very strange looking grain effect that kind of looks like a gradient grain. And this is called dithering. There's a lot of other kinds of dithering that people have made, lots of other types of dithering. And what I noticed was uh, Daniel Schiffman, who uh, has made a bunch of amazing tutorials and graphics programming, made uh, this video, it came out actually today, but I noticed that he had a very interesting looking dithering tutorial that, that he tried implementing in this program. You can see that he has this very cool looking effect right here with a very limited color space. Kind of what the Game Boy camera has. So you can see what I wanted to go for and it's definitely not what I have. I wanted to kind of follow along with this tutorial and try and figure out how he did what he did so that I can make something more Game Boy Camera-esque. I guess I should show off the program as it is right now. Uh, the only things that can really be changed around right now is the starting points of the brightness and contrast sliders and the amount of scale that's implemented into the program. So if I uh, change the scale to 6, I'll get a much bigger window, kind of like this. Um, it doesn't affect speed that much. Yeah. Everything's good. The way that I got it to look so much like a Game Boy camera was I actually had to rip the images into Microsoft Paint from me looking at the Game Boy through magnifying glass. Afterwards, I got them split up. I got the left uh, part of the contrast bar here, uh, the right part, the bottom part, and the top part of the brightness bars into individual images. Uh, I then got these markers here into their own images here and here. I got the word left just by itself. I got a array of numbers so I can print out how many images left in the film roll. It's kind of like this could be a really cute little photo booth app that I could just have people download for free if they want to use. Right now it is hard coded to show a list of camera inputs and then choose the second one. So for me, I have it choosing this one here, which is the 640 by 480 picture mode at 30 FPS on this webcam. If I were to change this to something like zero, then it would choose the five FPS picture mode, which would look very choppy. This actually looks more like what a Game Boy camera actually does because it has to do a lot of processing and dithering in order to get these effects into place for each frame that it outputs. Raising the resolution doesn't do too much, so if I was to take it to like 1080p for example, which is the, I think the 33rd camera, I might be wrong, still have the code so that it cuts down the image to size and then it outputs it. So it really doesn't do anything for the resolution. In fact, I think it made it load a bit longer. As long as the camera is at least 120 pixels wide and at least 112 pixels tall, it looks good in this. So what this program is actually doing is every single frame that you see, it will draw a blank background. It will check to see if the camera is still available. It will then read the picture from the camera and then it will store it as an image and then it will say a new image has been found. This way, every single time there's a new image, which is actually a true or false, it will find the image, cut it down to size, make sure it's the right size before it then is drawn to the screen. If there isn't a new image, it just prints out the old one. Then what I have it do is I have it print out the contrast bars and the contrast control is basically on a rail that gets changed 
whenever this value gets changed here. Same with the brightness bar, except that's actually changing its height instead of its width. Then what it does is based on the size of the photo reel, it will then print out the number of digits here. So as you can see right now, it's 30, which is two digits. If I change this to maybe three digits, then you can see it's possible to store way more than just a two digit number worth of images in here. I could even make it so that there's 300 images left in the image roll. Oh, and then right here, it uh, runs a function that I wrote to, to flatten everything down to grayscale and make it look kind of like a Game Boy camera. So this is actually what we're going to be editing today. We're not gonna be looking at the scale function today. That's just so that it can scale the program up and down. So the only thing that we're going to be doing is modifying this one section of the program, which is where the image data is being converted from its color mode into grayscale mode. If I actually took out this code right here where it's running that grayscale line, it will actually run the program in color mode. Who knows, maybe you want Game Boy camera for the Game Boy color. Probably still wouldn't look this good. Anyway. So there's a lot of customizability here. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it in the future, but I know right now I definitely want to make it look a lot more like a Game Boy camera. Now, here's one you can go and watch Daniel Schiffman's video about this topic. Um, I'm just going to do it, and then I'll walk through it just a little bit when I'm done with it, what I've done to implement it, and hopefully it'll be great. I'm going to try and implement it to the best of my knowledge. I might tweak it a little bit and then I'll walk through how I did it uh, afterwards. You don't need to go and watch this video, it's just it might be supplemental and helpful. But you should go check it out anyways because he's pretty cool. Grab snitches, telling all their business. All right, so I've been working on this for a while and I think I'm good. As far as it goes, I still have the old version implemented in here as well as the new version, but uh, here I'm just gonna go ahead and click this and there we go. It looks exactly the same, doesn't it? That's because I don't have it turned on right now. Uh, I have it so that when uh, the contrast is set to six right here, that it would turn on the new dithering function. And what this is actually doing, it looks like a mess. And uh, it was a mess in the code that I was looking at before. Thanks, Daniel. As far as the entire function goes, is for every single pixel, it will find out the amount of value that you're offsetting it from its original value. What I'm doing is I'm taking the color space of the full color RGB coming out of my camera and I'm telling it to change it to a number between 0 and 4 black and white. Well, 0 and 3, there's only four different colors on the Game Boy. Um, and what this is doing is it's doing the same thing up above here, but I added some extra code right here so that it can calculate the amount of difference that is offset. And then what I'm doing is I'm taking this value, the pixel to the right of whatever pixel I'm currently setting, I'm influencing its value by 7 sixteenths. The pixel to the bottom left, I'm influencing its value by 13 sixteenths. The pixel underneath it, I'm influencing its value by 5 sixteenths. And the pixel to the bottom right, I'm influencing its value by 1 16th. And what that ends up doing is this, which feels and looks a lot more like the kind of output that I would expect from the Game Boy camera. I really like how it turned out as far as it goes. I think that I need to get this contrast bar and this brightness bar actually working with what it's supposed to do, but I think I have something that looks a bit more like a final product. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be the end of this video. Um, I hope you liked it. If you have any questions, if anything confused you, if you want to know how something works, please tell me. Please put it in the comments. Find me on my Discord server. Talk to me about it. I would love to be able to teach more people about this kind of thing. I'm going to start trying to make more videos like this. I should be able to make a lot more videos like this. I have a lot of ideas that are still going on in my head. I'm constantly learning about new things, and um, I'm looking forward to continuing to learn things. And also, I want to pass them on to others, too.